Hello, great to have you with us again today on Let's Talk. Now, Nigeria is set to mark her 52nd independence anniversary on October 1. Now, Let's Talk uh, gives us a wonderful platform to analyze some of the basic challenges in the Nigerian system with a view to proffering workable solutions. Now, we and the entire Believers Love World Nation join patriotic Nigerians and the whole of Africa to celebrate possibilities in Nigeria. Now in this great season with deep reflection into our national experience, in today's topic we would like to look at celebrating Nigeria's possibilities in politics and good governance. But um, after this time out, we will be back. Stay right there. We can make it if we try. Oh, I believe we can be people who truly serve the fatherland. I believe that all the labors are for heroes and not in vain. I believe, I believe. Okay, great to have you back. And like I did say, it's Let's Talk. Thanks for joining us. We are looking at celebrating Nigeria's possibilities this time, uh, today rather, in politics and good governance. And um, to help me talk about this, I have with me Yemi Olayinka. He is a noted politician, he is a political commentator, a public policy analyst, as well as a social expert. You're welcome to Let's Talk. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, viewers. <laughs> okay. And, um, I'd like to give everybody, um, <coughs> we're getting ready for our independence and um, I believe in Nigeria project, and I think things will get better in Nigeria. Good morning. Absolutely. I love the op optimism with which mm. we are starting this mm. already. Mm. So, yes, we are celebrating our possibilities. We are celebrating Nigeria's possibilities, and today we're looking at a politics and good governance. So we, we um, get right to it. Now, a lot of people, when you ask them, they they feel that um, they're not really benefiting from the dividends of democracy. You know, they, they feel that um, the lack of good governance is one of the major issues that is facing the country, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Uh, some people feel they are not, or, or rather they say they're not being given equal opportunities to even participate in the political process. Mm -hmm. And now looking at um, possibilities in this uh, aspect of mm. governance. Mm. Now, what are some of the things that we can do as Nigerians, or what can the government do to okay. address that particular concern of Nigerians? Okay, um, like I said earlier, I, I believe in Nigerian project. I believe in this country. And I believe that um, Nigeria will move forward. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate our man of God, uh, Pastor Chris, that has started the Rich Out Nigeria program. Uh, we have made a lot of impact. I think uh, the very first thing that is required of any nation is a deliberate attempt to ensure that we have good governance. And uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And uh, in, in the Christ Embassy, you know, we impact people's lives. Uh, you go all out to give uh, God's word to people, and uh, it's been commendable. And I think we have made appreciable impact in our nation, and it's a continuum. It's a thing that we will continue to do. And this year, you know, we are celebrating our possibilities, and I believe that uh, we have a lot of chance to move forward, to be the best and more committee of nations. And uh, the process has started. It's not a thing we can do in one day. If you look at the process of political development in Nigeria, you know, the, the military interregnum, you know, mm -hmm. that was felt that is an aberration. A lot of things have been spoiled. A lot of things have not been developed. A lot of things have not been done. You know, a lot of things have been bastardized. Uh, the vision of our forefathers has not been carried out. But I still believe so strongly we have good Nigerians. I mean, we're not going to import people from anywhere, from the moon, to, to govern our nation for us. I mean, there are people that are God-fearing. And the very first thing is to begin deliberate attempt to source for people that are God-fearing to govern our nation. Okay. Okay, um, we are also talking about um, political pressure. Now, you are saying that we do have... Uh, people, we have godly people, we have people that are, can actually take, uh, you know, make positive impact mm. in governance as it were. But um, we don't really see a lot of them 
taking part. We don't really see most of them uh, taking up major roles, as it were. Now, when it comes to political pressure from the people, yeah. we did see, you know, when the year started, we had this fuel subsidy issue, yeah. and we saw, for the first time, really, Nigerians coming out united. It was peaceful. You yeah. know, they came out to demand for... Um, for something they believe or they felt, you know, they should have. Yeah. Now, do you think Nigerians are, are taking more part, a greater part in political pressure such as that, you know, as, lo as long as it is within the, the, the legal the confine, confines the confine yes, of law? Of yeah, law. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you think that Nigerians have been taken advantage of it? I, I, and think, I, think, they that, really? I think there's an awareness, to some extent, there's an awareness. And in any nation for, for development to... Uh, to, 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 to come up, there must be check and balances. There must be check and, thorough check and balances. The civil society um, uh, must be able to uh, stand up to their role, you know, to caution some aspect of uh, the excesses of government. It is possible for, for a government, you see, to, uh, to move in a direction that is not favorable uh, to, to the general populace. And uh, it is the duty of the civil society and the Nigerian populace, the entire populace, to, say, okay, to come together and say, look, we don't want this. Because in democracy, it's government of the people, by the people, and for the people. If that is true, okay. by definition of democracy, then the people's voice must be heard. The, 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 the people's voice must a whole sway in whatever happens around them, either economy, either, either, either political, whatever it is, they must have a say. And that's exactly what they have done when they all came together and said, no, and they put pressure on government until government has to reduce the price of, uh, of foil. So the issue of foil subsidy, I've said again and again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a fluke. It's a fluke. It's, 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 it's a cheat. It's a few set of people that have come together you know, as a cabal to milk Nigeria. And they're so powerful. They're so strong. They don't want to let go. And until we have a leader, a leader that is that is strong, that is, uh, that is strongly willed, that can say, okay, I want to confront this set of people, that is when we can make a progress. Otherwise, we continue to move around the clock, you know, move around the hole, move around the, the same position, and yeah. we come back to the same position until a leader comes up. And I, think, and I believe so strongly, it's going to be very soon. We're going to have a leader, a leader is going to emerge in Nigeria, that believe in a Nigeria project, a leader that is strong, that's going to transform our nation to the level that we all aspire to see. Okay, now still quickly talking about political pressure. Apart from that, uh, what we saw about Nigerians coming together to peacefully mm. uh, demonstrate or protest, yeah. as it were, what, what, is there any other form of uh, uh, pressure that can be put on government that is still within the confines of law that Nigerians can be involved in to hold you know, our leaders accountable yeah, for yeah, their Yeah, there, 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 there are other areas to which uh, people can come up. I mean, uh, a lot of writers are doing something now. You see a lot of people coming up with books, you know, okay. with drama, you know. A lot of areas, you know, to demonstrate that, look, good governance pays. I mean, we can see a few governors. I'm not trying to campaign for anybody in Nigeria, but if you have governed properly, if you have governed very well, you have the support of the people. An example is exactly what happened in Edo State. You, I, I, I want to take you back to the election that took place in Edo State. And um, for a long time, there was a particular party that was in power. And they weren't able to do something about the, the welfare of the people. And another government came on board, and they did well. You know? And when the election came, people said, oh, we don't want Godfatherism any longer. Somebody has done well with us. We're going to support this person all out. And they weren't allowed to support the person. You know, and that's exactly what we're going to see as, as we evolve in a democracy. People trying to uh, trust people, people that can be held accountable, people that can deliver the dividend of democracy. So there's several ways to wish, I mean, we can tell people, okay, what to do and how to do it. People are writing, people have their dramas, their, their, their paintings all over the place to depict good governance in Nigeria. And the moment you fall into the categories of people that can deliver very well, you're going to get the support of the people. Okay, so there is a lot of things that Nigerians can do to mount a pressure on, you know, uh, those in uh, government, uh, political leaders also to ensure that they actually do and serve the way they promised they would. Now, this is Let's Talk, if you are just joining us, and we are looking at um, celebrating Nigeria's possibilities in politics and good uh, governance. We will be back after this short break. Stay with us. Wow.
Okay, this one doesn't have any audio. People living in peace and harmony. Join Christ Embassy on the 1st of October 2012 as we distribute 15 million free copies of Rhapsody of Realities in commemoration of Nigeria's Independence Day celebration and embark on inspiring charity projects across the nation. We are bringing the change, taking a stand of transformation in Nigeria. Reach Out Nigeria 2012, celebrating our possibilities. For more information, please call the following numbers. Follow us on UCOS at ucos.com slash community slash run. Christ Embassy, promoting patriotism. Yes, we can. Okay, uh, welcome back. Yes, it's still Let's Talk, and we are still uh, celebrating uh, Nigeria's possibilities in politics and good governance. That is what we are looking at today, and I am still talking with Yemi Olayinka, who is a noted politician. He is a political commentator, a public policy analyst, and a social expert. And we have been talking. Now, um, one of the things that I want us to look at is political parties that we have. Okay. Now, a lot of the political parties that we, we have um, seem to lack focus, really. You know, they seem not to have a definite ideology or a manifesto or something that they really stand for. A lot of times it's about how powerful you are, the connections mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. you know, it's about Godfatherism and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, what can we do to change that so that we have political parties that um, do what they're supposed to do and that Nigerians who probably shy away because of what they are seeing can say, okay, I think I want to be part of this uh, particular political party and in that way be involved in the political process. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think um, this is an issue that has uh, really bothered my heart for, for quite a while. If you look at the current political dispensation, uh, you look at uh, the major party, you look at the, the PDP, uh, you look at the uh, ACN, you look at the EMPP. It's unfortunate that most of these parties came together out of sheer pressure. Okay. Like you rightly said, there are no defined, you know, specific ideology in the formation of the parties. And that's, that, that's quite unfortunate. If, if I want to take you back, in, in those days, in the days of UPN, the NPN, specifically, at the year of AG before then, specifically, you see Shifa Bafemi Aulau cut out with a specific ideology. This is the program of the party. They have a manifesto. And all members of the party follow the manifesto to the latter. And they have a leadership that monitors that you cannot deviate from the manifesto of the party. And that is party discipline. We don't longer have, have any party discipline in the parties. Everybody does anyhow. Recently, you know, you see somebody say is the campaign from a political party yeah. is joining another cross one. I mean, it's cross carpet from another party. You're going to another party immediately, and nobody is saying anything. And unfortunately, most unfortunately, uh, 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 law permits that, so that's not anybody can do about it. So a lot of people are in a, a, a wrong party for a different reason. Different you, you are just in a particular party because okay, you want to grab power for what purpose? What do you want to achieve? Do you want to impact people's lives? Do you want to just go there and grab money? I mean, national cake, whatever I can get, let me get it now. And that, that's, 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 that's the problem. Until we have, you see, a, a, a proper political party, it's going to evolve over time. You can see the realignment that is taking place right now. You know, initially, different, different people with different ideas, with different ideology, came under a particular umbrella just because they want to get power. Yeah. You know, just the very first thing is what they have done to take the military out, out of uh, the system and have a democracy. Now we have a democracy and it's, it's evolving gradually. And with time, you see, I, I realize that a lot of people are saying, oh, I can't deal with these people. I can't deal with these people. So there's a realignment that is taking place right now. And before you know it, there's going to be proper realignment and the parties will be, have definitive uh, objectives for the party and that's what people will follow. If you have a party that doesn't have a good manifesto, people will not follow them. The moment that you are going to be held accountable when you have power, at the end of the day when you come back to them, you'll be careful with what we do with power. 
and that's what I believe. So there's an involvement, a gradual involvement. It's a gradual process. I mean, okay. we've had a challenge over time. We have been bastardized by the military. We have been, we have been, we have been cheated by the military. We have, a lot of things have been done. But see, to build is, is usually uh, it takes a long time. You know, since I've been destroyed. You know, I, I want to take you back to uh, the issue of uh, electricity in Nigeria. You can you discover that. Um, what have been destroyed for over 30 years that are cables that have not been replaced. And now you want to generate. If we generate, how do you distribute, how do you transmit? It's a big problem. But I think with the, with the IPP that is coming up, you know, I just used that as an example. Yes, an with example. The IPP, that is, IPP that is coming up, I think things will begin to change. Okay. And that will affect the, the, the lives of the people uh, gradually. And Nigeria will be a better place to live in. Okay. Do you think that has to start from the leadership of the oh, political that's, that, parties that, or from the people who would join no, the No, no, no. It has to do with party. Even the, the, the members of the party are not from the moon. There are people in Nigeria. Okay. You understand? See, I've, I've said it. The very first thing we're going to do, there's going to be a total reorientation of the people. And I've said it on, on air before, until we have in our curriculum the love of our nation. There's a study about our nation. There's a study about our hero. There's a study about the leadership. So people have a consciousness from the beginning, from the start. As you grow up, you grow up to love Nigeria. As a Nigerian, you know, when, when, when that starts, you know, you, you, things will begin to evolve. You know, you develop to become somebody that's passionate about your nation. You know, when you get to the position of leadership, you're not just getting there for getting sick. Yeah. You have a definitive mission. You want to serve Nigeria. And that's what we should look at. And, and I've said it, until we begin to shop for the right people. In America, leader doesn't just evolve. People don't just become American president in a day. They train them. They, have they look for them. They train them. They develop them. And over time, you see, by the time they're putting forward two or three people from different parties, these are people that have been trained. So if, whoever emerges is adequate to rule the nation. So there okay. must be a deliberate attempt by our leaders to have put a culture of the love of our nation at the same time, develop leaders, people that can handle things properly the way we want. Okay, still talking about um, uh, Nigerians taking part in the political process. Yeah. Now, you, you know what happens. A lot of times, people stay back and they criticize. Mm. They see all the things that are going wrong and mm. all the things that the leaders mm. Mm. are doing wrong. Mm. But they themselves, who probably have the solution or yeah. have what it takes stay to back. do better, they stay back and they don't get involved. What have you to say to that? I mean, how do we get more Nigerians really participating, you know, Entering a political party, yeah. joining a political party, yeah. attending meetings, taking part in elections yeah. from the grassroots level and all of that. How, how do we achieve that? Yes, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the reorientation that I talked about. And I, and I want to appeal to our, our, our spiritual leaders, like uh, our pastor has said in the time past, that we should, we should go forth and get, get power. You know, it has encouraged a lot of us, I mean, just to participate. I mean, you can't just sit back and begin to criticize and say, oh, uh, they're not doing it well, they're not doing it right, and, and you stay back and you're not participating. Some people don't even have voters card. They don't even vote. They don't. And, and that's, that's the beginning. You have to participate. You have to be part of it. Don't say, oh, Nigeria is a bad place. Your tongue is powerful. Your tongue is anointed. You know, you know what to say at the right time. Say good about Nigeria. Say good things about the people. I mean, declare good things about Nigeria. And for, it starts from there. Then participate. Register. When it's time for register, register. that of single vote, it counts. It matters. Ensure that you register. Ensure you're part of it. And I want to appeal to all our political leaders. Encourage your members to be part of it. We need God-fearing people to participate in our polity until we begin to do that. I mean, we still sit back and, and be complaining. And unfortunately, most unfortunately, anytime we sit back and we did not participate when we're complaining, I mean, these same people, the thugs, the rogues, the bad people, they will make laws that will affect you and I, and the church must obey. We have to obey. We have to obey the law of the land. And see, we are, we are fortunately, you know, we are compelled to even pray for them. Yes, we pray we for the rogues when they get the power. We pray for those in authority. That's what the Bible says. If you don't do that, you are not, you are not obeying the word of God. So the best we can do for ourselves is that let everybody, good people of Nigeria, participate, be interested in Nigeria project, be part of Nigeria project. Give your time, give your energy, participate in whatever way you can participate. Each ordinary voting is a participation. Absolutely. I encourage everybody, let's be part of Nigeria project. Okay, uh, that's a huge food for thought. Now, if you have uh, the power or the solution or you have what it takes to make a change and you don't, 
move into you know where it is happening you don't move into uh, the, the politics the process of uh, the political process itself mm -hmm. by the time laws and legislations are start to be made it's mm -hmm. going to affect you mm -hmm. and then you know it wouldn't amount to anything so mm -hmm. we need to be part of that particular process well we're still looking at celebrating nigeria's possibilities mm -hmm. in politics and good governance and uh, we will be back right after now stay with us Nigeria, we can make it if we try. Oh, I believe we can be people who truly serve the fatherland. I believe that all the labors are for heroes and not in vain. I believe, I believe. Welcome back. We are still on it, uh, talking, uh, considering Nigeria's possibilities uh, in the area of politics and good governance and we have set a uh quite a number of things now one of the things also that is an issue seem to be um infrastructure yeah. you know we don't we don't as yet have all the necessary infrastructure on ground to uh to make for good governance in different sectors. You, you talked mm. about power, mm. you know, uh, and other things as mm. well. Mm. Now, but, but there does appear to be, I mean, contracts are being issued every time to mm. get those uh, infrastructure in place. And at the end of the day, this is not happening. Mm. Now, what can we do? What has to happen so that that particular as aspect of good governance mm. will turn around in terms of infrastructure so we begin to see the infrastructure the right infrastructure yeah. that is required yeah well, well the very first thing is uh, electricity uh, it's very important for you for us to have a steady power supply and that will help a lot of industry uh, and at the same time you, you talk about the road you talked about uh, other uh, facilities that are necessary for good life for people mm -hmm. uh, I believe so strongly that uh, the steps that have been taken uh, so far is in the right direction towards um, uh, generating uh, power in Nigeria. Uh, I believe in, in the issue of uh, the IPP, uh, uh, IPP uh, the, the power in power sector, okay. uh, there is a total, a holistic uh, rejuvenation in that sector right now, and I hope we will able to continue in that direction. Uh, currently, uh, for the very first time in Nigeria, uh, recently, I knew that they've started generating close to about 4,000 megawatts. Yeah, it's never happened in the history of our country. And uh, we're told that by the end of this year, Nigeria will generate about 5,000. And by next year, they are working towards generating about 8,000. And if that could be done, and I think uh, it will affect quite a number of things. Industry will spring up and people will, uh, will have uh, uh, jobs to do, people have things to do. So I believe so strongly that uh, in the area of infrastructure, uh, the <coughs> government of the day has started taking the right step in the right direction. But my challenge is the sustainability okay. of such uh, moves, you know. Would they be able to sustain it? We have seen group programs in the time past, but along the line, it will be cut short. I would pray that this one will not be cut short. Okay, yeah. so that continued. And again, in terms of uh, road infrastructure, uh, they've started the move. I mean, so they have a, a, a proper uh, planning right now. And I think and I pray that they'll be able to sustain what they have started. I think there's a move towards uh, developing an infrastructure uh, that we have seen. But so Nigeria have a role. We all have a role to play. Yeah. We have a role to play in supporting the government of the day. All is not about politicking. All is not about condemnation. All is not evil in Nigeria. We have good people. We have people that have good intention. We have people that are doing the right thing. Example is Lagos State. Example is those State. Example is Akwa Ibon. People, some people are doing nicely. Even at the federal level, some people are doing nicely, even though uh, we have some leaders that are not doing the right thing. But I think with time and with our prayer, with our support, with our participation, things will take a new shape in Nigeria. Okay, and finally, which, which also has to do with what you just said, mm. uh, uh, policy inconsistency. Yeah. You know, sometimes you've got different uh, mm. bodies, institutions, or mm. even different governments yeah. come up, and then when they come, they come with their own policies, which mm. are different from the previous ones. Yeah. How do we streamline these policies to ensure that there is this continuity, uh, there's this consistency? Yes, that, that, that's what, you know, I've said something earlier. But the moment we start having ideology in political parties, and we have parties saying, oh, this is a manifesto. At the federal level, if we have a specific manifesto, government is a continuum. 
I mean, people go in and out. Yeah. So by the time you're leaving, you know that party, party A has an agenda. If party A still comes to power, party A knows that, oh, this is the policy of my party. This is the agenda of my party. This is what we're going to do. And it follows it through. It's not as if, oh, you're coming up with your own agenda. The same thing is going to be done by the people. I remember in those days of, of UPN, I mean, uh, uh, in, 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 in the era of uh, 1980s, 80s, 70s and 80s, I mean, specific instructions were given to the governors. And nobody can come up with his own idea. It's the idea of the party and party policy, party decision, whole sway in all the things that they do. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're going to experience in Nigeria. The moment we begin to have ideology in our political parties, things will change. All those ideas of, oh, this one, uh, if somebody's stopping at a particular point and that person coming up, if you have a party ideology manifesto, you will follow it through. And that's exactly what we're praying for. And it's going to happen in Nigeria. Okay, it is going to happen in Nigeria, my guests uh, thus say. Now we are celebrating Nigeria's possibilities in the area of politics and uh, governance for today's discussion. And um, I have been privileged to uh, have talked with Yemi Olayinka, who is a noted politician. He is a political commentator, a public policy analyst, as well as a social expert. Thank you so much Thank for finding too. time to come yeah. on today's edition of the show. And um, I think he has said it uh, about all. I mean, um, you cannot sit on the sidelines and expect the change that you expect to occur. You have to be in the foray. You have to be a player because if you don't and you have the solution, when things start to go wrong, you will have but yourself to blame. But we have the solution and we are determined to be right where it is happening. And um, ultimately, we will see the change that we desire. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being part of our today special edition of Let's Talk, uh, where we, ahead of uh, Nigeria's independence anniversary, are looking at possibilities and how we can celebrate them. Thank you very much.